Good evening, everyone. My name is Shiva Sachdeva, and I would like to welcome you all on this webinar on exploring careers in the field of psychology. I would like to start by introducing our um, the first speaker today, who is Mr. Jitin Chawla, who is an eminent career counselor. He is an MBA graduate from one of the top most business institutes of India, Faculty of Management Studies. Mr. Jitin Chawla is the founder and director of North India's oldest and top most career counseling firm, Center for Career Development, which is located in Delhi. Within a span of 21 years, he and his team of counselors have done almost 36,000 plus workshops, 360 plus career fairs, and counseled over 1 lakh students. He's a member of National Career Development Associations, Association USA and actively participates in international conferences in various countries. I would now, I would now like to introduce Dr. Derek H. Lindquist who is a professor and dean at O.P. Jindal Global University. Derek was born in Utah in the Western United State, States, where he earned a BA in psychology from Weber State University in 1995. He was initially interested in clinical psychology, uh, but then Derek was exposed to neuroscience following graduation and became instantly captivated to the field. In 1997, he attended the University of Utah for post baccalaureate study, taking biology, chemistry, and other topics uh, which were avoided during college. Dr. Linquist served as a postdoctoral fellow and research associate at Indiana University and the University of Kansas, respectively. In 2009, Dr. Linquist joined the psychology department at the Ohio State University as an assistant professor. Um, so I would now request Mr. Jitin Chawla to take over. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Shivya. Thank you. And uh, welcome to you, Dr. Derek. It's uh, amazing to have you here with us. Uh, Thank so you, sir. Welcome. So great. Uh, I can see a lot of people writing good evening, good evening. So hi, Vanishri, Ayushi, Sanika, Rajni. Uh, welcome to all of you, even Richa and Bharti, who joined in much earlier. Uh, guys, it's, uh, you know, uh, psychology is, uh, is a career option which a lot of people are now enthused about. Uh, I have been going to schools for so many years now, but last five years or so, I've seen people really, really interested in psychology. Whenever we do uh, any event related to psychology, uh, whenever we are doing a webinar or a workshop, we find amazing attendance. And today also, I, I, I can see a lot of people coming in. Uh, I also feel that the greatest discovery of uh, my generation is that a human being can alter his life by altering his attitudes of mind, you know? So, uh, so that is how this field is. We all want to understand how others are thinking, uh, behaviorally how they are different. In a structured way, can we measure cert certain parts of human behavior, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So, uh, so that is why this webinar we thought we'll bring forth before you guys uh, an array of career options in psychology, how it is shaping up in India and globally. And we have an amazing uh, person from the field, Dr. Derek, with us. Uh, and some of you are regulars, you attend our webinars. So uh, we'll take your queries out also after some time. So Riddhi, you are asking a question. So definitely we'll take it after some time. So we'll just build up the webinar and then after some time we'll take on questions. I, I'm sure you guys also would have seen uh, during Corona time and after that, there were so many issues people faced, you know? So there were people facing depression, suicidal cases had increased. Uh, child psychologists were being referred to and so on. Okay, quickly before I move ahead, uh, yeah, I, I'll uh, when I say next review, then only you move. So uh, uh, I I was speaking to a client of ours, uh, his brother in US again. He's one of uh, one of the top sleep disorder psychologists in the country. You know, he advises people on sleep disorder. How do you manage your sleep patterns and so on? And even during Corona time, all of us would have experienced that. Yeah. 
so those are issues which you need to understand and and take it forward there is like uh, in bangalore in india a uh, uh, social media detox center opened up yeah so uh, i i typically like to follow on psychology uh, career news what is the latest uh, i was sitting with very senior official of the delhi government and they shared with us their plans of hiring more special educators you know uh, hiring more uh, counselors in school hiring more career counselors do you know that in india also about 19 states uh, thanks to various state governments and some un and un assisted bodies a uh, lot of uh, psychometric testing and career counseling exercises happening across schools across government schools yeah so from the government side also from this side also uh, somebody uh, today was asking me that i want to work in defense sector so you have institute like dipr defense institute of psychological research yeah so lot of avenues so we will today we will today explore these and then we will build it up questions ridhi i will take up later on but generally to answer that yes you can do it in fact we have been sending students outside india so ridhi uh, you can connect with us we'll be sharing some numbers also yes you can but you need to build up a very strong profile in 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 the sense of research projects or publications research publication if you can get published in international journals internships uh, any social work projects you have done any national international competition how active you are in college in terms of societies and all so you'll have to build up on all of this to uh, to get into a good masters program so uh, ribu if you can kindly put up the ppt now so i'll just start off with a small ppt i'll initiate and then i'll just pull dr derek in the discussion uh, so this is a sample question can you answer this question i can see uh, 107 people watching right now can you answer this question four figures are there which is the fifth figure you can answer a b c d or e what do you feel students who are attending answer fast what is it what would be the answer be like a and then i'll explain it to you a or b or c or d or e what is the correct answer anyone uh people are writing d and some people have copied them is it come on do your own thing e i got one meeka is saying e trending age is saying e okay Chanchal Yadav says C. So I'll give you a very simple reasoning. See the blue thing, the blue square moves by one position, uh, anti-clockwise. Okay. So the blue square is going one, one, one. If you can see the figures, whereas the red circle, it moves clockwise but two positions. Yeah. Just notice it. Okay. So where would uh, it reach? So the correct answer is C. look at c so the uh, the red dot will move two places and the blue is moving one place uh, opposite directions yeah so the correct answer is c c is the correct answer okay this was just a simple aptitude uh, question next just for fun guys next please okay now when you look at psychology you'll find lot of career options the aviation psychology gaming psychology you know a lot of you i'm sure are gamers yeah how do gamers think how to uh, how to do the storyboard so that people will be more attracted to it and blah 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 and number of things which uh, will be addressed by gaming psychology fertility counseling so sometimes people find it difficult to uh, conceive a child yeah and then hospitals are resorting to fertility counseling consumer psychology i have a friend of a friend and she earlier she used to work with png somewhere in uk proctor and gamble that is and she would uh, you know she would do focus group discussions on uh, on changes in color of uh, let's say tide uh, you have tied uh, this uh, washing powder so changes in color of the packet what font type they should write so that people kind of buy more they are attracted to buying more in supermarkets more visible and blah 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 so consumer psychology there's a there's a toffee chewing and making company in india candico in fact they hired a couple of psychologists again to find out uh, various things which will appeal to children because a lot of time which toffee to buy or which candy to buy the children are taking a call on it yeah and so on 
So in this also, you can be an advertising psychologist, marketing psychologist. And then, of course, a lot of people ask me, I don't know why, but a lot of girls ask me, I want to be a criminal psychologist. In fact, uh, I had a trainee, she was interning with us, and uh, she had interned at the Tihar jail also. Yeah. And uh, and she was excited about it that, look, uh, maybe I, I, I like to I like to work with criminals. Yeah. So criminal psychology. So uh, uh, criminology is a, is a field. Uh, uh, I was visiting Simon Fraser University at Vancouver. Again, uh, it was being highlighted. So they have very good, very strong courses on criminology. Parapsychology. You might have seen some programs on TV using parapsychology. Sports psychologist, forensic psychologist. Yeah, industrial counselors or industrial psychologists will look at what an HR role demands. Yeah, handling teams, uh, selection at times. Any any issues are there? Addressing that. Any organization development is happening. So using this thing to uh, to take using uh, uh, like this thing to uh, psychometric testing at times might be used in in recruitments testing might be used and so on depending on one's role one would uh, one would go for it next good evening isha okay you can you can also keep on doing various things on the side see a lot of people ask me are there full time courses available in i want to be a music therapist so you might not get a degree in music therapy though outside india you you can also but in India, you are pursuing a psychology course. Side by side, you want to build up on dance therapy, music therapy. So those kind of some smaller programs are available. Yeah, of course, typically at a master's level, some places now uh, even earlier. But masters or post master, then you can specialize. So clinical psychology, counseling <coughs> psychology, consumer psychology, and so on. Okay, so. Uh, uh, Lot of lot of uh, work is happening in the education sector. So if somebody asks me that which are the top fields in India where employment exists, then I would say counseling. You know, including career counseling. Like I run a career counseling firm, but uh, uh, if I look at all over India, so in my mind there will be maybe 800, 900 career counseling firms. Yeah, I know of special startups in special education sector. I know at least at least 11, 12 firms in special education sector. Yeah. And these are new startups, like some five year old, some seven, eight years, and so on and so forth. So I see a lot of jobs in counseling. I see a lot of jobs in special education. Even government jobs, you want special educator. Okay. School counselor, a lot of jobs, lots and lots of jobs. Yeah. Okay. Clinical takes some time. A lot of people talk about clinical. Clinical, it takes time for you to kind of come up to a certain level of social maturity also an understanding also that the clients will believe in you so clinical takes comparatively more time to establish and to start off so you can think of clinical psychology also yeah maybe you can you can uh slides are a bit blur is it I just check because i am able to see it clearly i am on a different laptop and the slide is being shown on a different so lisa ayushi just check okay next Rehabilitation psychology. So where uh, like some disability has been there, some injury has been there, then rehabilitation psychologists are helping them in understanding and in, you know, broadening their horizons about it in being comfortable with, okay, something has happened, but now let's be positive and now let's build up. Yeah. So, uh, okay, Isha is commenting. She's a special educator and counseling psychologist in 15 years. And, and you can earn money with blessings. I mean, what Isha is trying to highlight is, this is a career where you actually help out people. Imagine you are just helping out people. Yeah, you are not selling any, uh, I would say, uh, sweetened water like Coke, or you are not selling any fries. You are you are actually helping out people and building up your own career also. Yeah, Mika sports psychology is also a big field and it's really growing uh, in India, uh, albeit slowly compared to the rest of the world, but still uh, I see some presence of it happening. So, uh, yeah, Kashish, uh, Kashish is absolutely right, guys. Uh, people who are not able to see the slides, you can join from the laptop instead of mobile. Please join from your from your laptops. Next. So you can join a rehabilitation center at a hospital or a government-run rehabilitation center or some private also have come up. Yeah. 
school psychologists. I'm sure a lot of your schools, you would have seen counselors. So they deal with students' issues. It might be academic issues. Some people are having difficulty in concentration, in memorizing, in time management. Yeah, Any kind of classroom behavior they, they have to build up. They also help the school in developing a kind of a culture. Uh, they also at times uh, talk to teachers so that teachers can report or share with them any issues which children are facing or a specific children, child is facing. Yeah. So how to identify a dyslexic child, how to identify a child with dyscalculia and so on and so forth. Okay. So that is what a school, school psychologist does. So uh, next. Clinical psychologist. So I'll, I'll let uh, Derek take a lead here, uh, you know, uh, and uh, Derek, uh, please come in and uh, please share in detail. I can see a lot of people uh, are very enthused about it. I mean, right at the beginning of the webinar, uh, we are seeing a very good attendance. So that shows people are really interested. Uh, Derek, uh, all yours, uh, uh, please uh, please share your experiences. Sure. Well, first, uh, thank you again for having me and welcome to all the students out there. It's uh, always a pleasure to interact. So, um, you know, I've been doing psychology for uh, 20 plus years in terms of research. Uh, I've been studying it uh, for about 30 years. So it's a fantastic field. I love it. Um, so I know we've got a, a number of slides here. So let me just talk to you a little bit about some of the um, opportunities that are available. So clinical psychology is really the uh, area where you're involved in uh, treating, enabling, helping people that are dealing with mental illness. So this may be depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, uh, eating disorders, substance abuse disorders, you know, it goes on and on. And so uh, typically to be a clinical psychologist would require a little bit more education. So once you graduate with that bachelor's, you would go on for a master's and then ultimately a PhD. Um, but these individuals uh, often are gonna work in a hospital setting, mental health care setting or uh, private practice. And uh, we can do the next slide, please. Sports psychology. So as uh, Mr. Jinton just said, this is an area that's really uh, grown and kind of exploded the last few years in um, India. So this is the idea that uh, a psychologist would work with a team, uh, often a professional team, but we're seeing this more and more at the collegiate level. So colleges and university, and even some uh, high schools are beginning to do it. And so sports psychology is really there to assist. Uh, they may offer expertise with regard to what are the best types of practice, for instance, in order to learn a new uh, technique or method better. Uh, they can also be involved on the more health or medical side. So we all know that concussions is something that we need to be concerned with. So a sports psychologist uh, may uh, be available to assess and ultimately make a diagnosis as to whether a concussion has occurred or not which is really important, of course, because uh, we know that uh, successive concussions can really have a long-term impact on the individual. Uh, next slide. Neuropsychology. Great, so this is actually my background. And I do wanna make a distinction here. <clears throat> I use uh, here, see uh, neuropsychology often used interchangeably with uh, biological psychology or behavioral neuroscience is a bit more of the modern term that we use. So I am a behavioral neuroscientist that is a biological psychologist or a physiological psychologist, however you want to refer to it. Uh, that means we are involved in research. We're investigating and trying to understand how does the brain modulate and sort of enable all these various psychological functions and behavior that we're interested in right? Attention, learning and memory, decision-making, et cetera. Which areas of the brain and how does that operate? Now, on the flip side is neuropsychology, which is really more treatment-oriented. So a neuropsychologist is often working with patients that have experienced brain damage. This might be due to some external cause, right? Maybe you get hit on the head due to a car accident, for instance, or it may be due to a uh, internal biological cause. Uh, due to illness or other issues, including COVID. So we know that there are long-term uh, mental effects associated with COVID-19. So a neuropsychologist is really there to try to understand what are the functional consequences of a particular type of brain damage. All right, can we do the next slide? 
And while we're waiting, I'll just uh, tell you, uh, again, my background is uh, behavioral neuroscience. So I spent about 20 years before I moved to India exploring the neurobiology of learning and memory. That is, when you learn new information and you encode and store that in your brain, what's the process? How does that occur at the level of the neurons and individual synapses? And uh, Mr. Jitten or whoever else is there, uh, if we could go back to the slides and move on. Uh, Derek, uh, he'll just take a minute. He's uh, just setting it up. Something happened there, yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, meanwhile, Derek, I... if I can ask you, uh, like, what has been most exciting time in your life when you have been in the psychology field? Also, when you were a child, when you were in, like, class 11th and 12th, what were you thinking? Did you did you think that you will be a psychologist that time? What what and where did you go to school? Do tell us. I did not. So uh, for me, when I first entered college, I had dreams of being a, a doctor, a medical doctor. Oh. Um, and uh, about two weeks into molecular biology, I went. Uh, thank you, but no. <laughs> and so uh, I had always had this fascination in terms of you know why do we act the way we do, uh, you know in terms of all those things that make each of us unique. And so uh, it was a pretty quick decision for me to switch over to psychology and I loved it. Uh, I was able to get some research experience in college, but uh, I was, as was noted at the outset, you know, when I graduated, I thought I was gonna be a clinical psychologist. Okay. And uh, it wasn't until a couple years later that I, I sort of fell into and was exposed to neuroscience. So I always tell my own students here at OP Jindal, uh, you know, one of the jobs of a college student is to figure out what gets you excited, right? You're ultimately trying to figure out what do you want to do with your life. And so it's really about getting that experience and exposure in order to try to determine what works for you, right? What gets you personally motivated, wants you to get up in the morning. All right. And I see we're back. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Absolutely. And so, you know, uh, I do think that there's sort of these classical or kind of canonical disciplines in psychology. Uh, biopsychology is certainly one of them. Uh, social psychology is another. Uh, this is a huge area. And so this is really the uh, discipline in the field of psychology that's interested in understanding how do we sort of change our thoughts, our feelings, our desires, our behavior when we're part of a group versus when we're alone, right? So it's that social component. And uh, unless, of course, you're living on a desert island, which I'm assuming no one is, we're all very social creatures by uh, nature. And so social psychology is really trying to understand uh, not just your own behavior, but why, why do people engage in uh, sort of using stereotypes or prejudice? Where does that come from? What are the conditions that lead to people to comply with a request or more often to obey someone who is an authority? So social psychology is one of the biggest areas of psychology and really a fascinating field because it really explores and explains a lot in terms of our behavior, right? Why do we behave the way that we do? Uh, if we could do the next slide. So Isha says psychology is in everything everywhere. And I absolutely agree. You know, psychology is one of the few disciplines where it really applies to virtually every aspect of your life, right? So right now as students, right, clearly we have psychology that's involved in education and trying to ensure or abet how do we learn best. Uh, it's involved in your occupation once you ultimately go out into the work field and you start you know, working in some uh, vocation. Uh, it's involved with our relationships, right? Personal relationships with families, uh, intimate relationships, uh, familiar relationships. So really most everything that we're engaged in, uh, again, psychology is ultimately going to come into play. And developmental psychologists are particularly interested in these mental processes and their behavior, specifically how they change over time with maturation, right? I think everyone recognizes a child is very different than a adolescent who's very different than an adult who is very different than someone who's in old age. So how does our psychology change as we grow older, right? How does our behavior alter? How is our mental processes altered as a result? All right, next slide. Cognitive psychology. Uh, 
So again, these last few here, these are sort of the, the basic domains of psychology. These are the ones you're gonna find in every department of psychology around the world. So cognitive psychology is really interested in understanding what we call, quote, higher order mental functions. And so this is really referring to language, for instance, right? How do we acquire and learn language, which is an amazing feat? Has to do with our ability to reason or to think critically, our ability to be involved in decision making. So all of these sort of higher order functions, right? Tool use is another example. Um, or creativity, which is an area that's really gotten a lot of attention in the last uh, five to 10 years. So it's cognitive psychologists are really trying to understand, really, again, these sort of functions or features that make us unique uh, among many of the other organisms of the world. Uh, next slide. Forensic psychology, great. So Mr. Jinton had mentioned this earlier, uh, criminal and uh, forensic psychology, again, are really booming in India. And so these are both interrelated. They're not quite the same, but they're very, very similar. So both forensic and criminal psychology are engaged or interested in the criminal justice system. So a, a forensic or a criminal psychologist, for instance, may ask questions like, well, why do people engage in criminal behavior? Right? Is there something unique about them with their mindset or the way that they were raised that made people engage in criminal behavior? Or we might come at it from a decision-making perspective. Right? So imagine you have a jury that's listening to evidence and ultimately they have to come to some conclusion or decision. Well, how do they go about that? Right? You have a group of individuals all engaging and talking. So how does that decision-making arise out of this group dynamic, this group play? And so forensic and criminal psychologists, again, are, are very big fields that are, are clearly uh, uh, growing and uh, really coming to prominence here in India and many other parts around the world. All right, next slide. Human factors. So this is really more what we call humanism. Now, I won't really go into the background, but humanism really began in the 60s and 70s. It was a backlash from some of the other previous schools or thoughts in psychology, which really kind of placed the emphasis on more of a stimulus response, really more of a kind of an automaton type thinking. So humanism or humanist psychology really comes at it from the perspective that humans are naturally good, that we have these natural drives to abate and, excuse me, abet and aid our fellow human beings, our fellow citizens. So in this case, this is really looking at it from these humanistic uh, perspective. Now, I can see here from the slide that they're actually coming at this from a slightly different perspective. Here they're looking at it more from a, a technological perspective. So this might look at this relationship between technology and humans. So one of the areas of this has really kind of grown in recent years as well is called cyber psychology, right? How do people engage online uh, with regard to the internet and particularly social media? which while is a wonderful thing, also has a real problem associated with it, right? That ability to be anonymous. And we know that people really change their behavior, right? The way they engage with other people, the way that they will speak, right? People say things online that they would certainly never say uh, to a person's face. So as I said earlier, psychology can really apply to most facets of life. And as we sort of grow as a world, right? Uh, and these new niches open up and technology and the internet and social media is certainly one of those. Well, we now have psychologists that, psychologists that move into that. They start uh, doing research and investigating. And before you know it, you have this whole new field that arises. So I had never heard of cyber psychology five years ago. It just, it didn't exist. Uh, now we have whole schools that are devoted to cyber psychology. Uh, next slide, please. Eric, can you yes, answer so, this question? Yes, so I do see some questions. So how do we come across which type of psychology is suitable for us? Great question. So I'm going to come at this from my own school's perspective. Um, so we are the Jindal School of Psychology and Counseling. Uh, we just opened our doors. We just welcomed our first batch of students this past August. Uh, we've got about 150 plus students so far, and uh, it's been a great first year. We have a lot of really motivated students. So. Again, what I tell all of these students is your job is to try to figure out what gets you excited, right? What do you want to do? What discipline do you want to study? 
Well, the way you come about that is you need a program that in, sort of offers that exposure and that expertise to you. So for our students, for instance, and again, there's many other great psychology programs out there, but I'll talk about mine because it's the one I'm familiar with. For our program, all of our students will uh, take uh, mandatory core courses their first two years. So there's 19 core courses, and many of those we've been talking about, cognitive, developmental, biological, forensic, uh, industrial organization, working in the world of business and industry. So HR, for instance. Um, so we have all of these courses that our students are exposed to, as well as what we call skill-based learning, right? You have to learn about statistics. You have to learn how to write like a psychologist. You have to learn about research methodology. How do you design and uh, do an experiment? And so ultimately, the program that you enter, hopefully they have enough breadth, that is, they have enough opportunities that you really get the exposure to all these various discipline and courses. Because ultimately, there's really no other way to figure out whether you're interested in something until you get that exposure. I'll go back to myself, right? I had never been exposed to neuroscience as a college student. It wasn't until after I graduated that I had that exposure and it just clicked. I suddenly knew that's what I wanted to pursue. And so I think that's really the most important thing as you sort of weigh and uh, look at all these various schools of psychology is to really look at their, their programs closely, right? Which one's gonna give me the best education and the best opportunity to really kind of figure out what it is that I get excited over, what it is that I really want to pursue on my own. Um, social psychology, I believe we've already done. Upcoming domains. Uh, yeah, there's lots of it out there. So uh, I would say this is uh, a decent uh, uh, sort of exemplar of it. Uh, music therapy, art therapy, play therapy, drama therapy, dance movement therapy, animal assistive therapy. Now, obviously the key word here is therapy. So these are all treatment oriented. Um, and so within the domain of psychology, when we think treatment, we primarily think clinical psychology, which we talked about already, um, but there's also counseling psychology. And there is a distinction here. Counseling psychology is typically not dealing with a severe mental illness. Counseling psychologists are really there to aid, say, families. So you might come in and you need some sort of family therapy or marital therapy or maybe you're doing it for your work where you're having your employees engage. So counselors are usually involved in issues and problems of more moderate severity, we'll say, uh, as opposed to clinical psychology, which again is a little bit more severe in terms of the patients that they see. And so again, there are all sorts of different fields that are really opening up. Uh, dance movement therapy is a really big one. Any type of expressive arts is really a big one as well. And again, this is usually in a therapeutic setting where you're allowing people to work through their issues uh, through you know, art, through painting and drawing, dance, et cetera. Uh, next slide. Uh, top recruiting companies. Well, Mr. Jitin, I'll, I'll let you uh, talk about this one. Yes, yes. Uh, thanks a lot, Derek. A uh, lot of information. There are loads and loads of questions for you. I think I'll right. take one of the questions quickly and before I move on to uh, recruitment side. Uh, so Ayushi Sharma is asking, if by luck I get the opportunity to go abroad, what can I further pursue with psychology? So let's say, suppose Ayushi wants to go to US. So which, which areas uh, you know uh, uh, are available with, where there are good opportunities for growth? What would you say to that, Derek? She's, she's a student in 12th right now. Hi, I'm not sure if we lost him or if you guys can hear me. Yeah, yeah, I can. All right, well, I'll just jump in real quick. So it's a great question about what you can do. So one of the great things about a bachelor's degree in psychology, it does open up all these opportunities. So you could uh, enter the workforce directly because a lot of employers really value psychology students. You have a lot of knowledge and skills that is really beneficial for them. So they seek out psychology students. You could also continue with your higher education, so a master's program or a PhD, uh, either in India or abroad. And so the thing to keep in mind though is with a psychology degree, you don't necessarily have to work in psychology or study, quote, in psychology, right? Now, if you wanna pursue psychology, wonderful, great. We'd love to have you. But again, psychology degree is also preparatory. 
So if you get your bachelor's degree and you decide you want to go into law or business or other fields, again, psychology really sets you up for all those uh, different opportunities. And uh, Mr. Jitten, I know you're back, but if I could just answer one question that I get over and over, I'm sure many of the students have, is in India, right, we typically have a three-year bachelor's degree. That's yeah. true for OP Jindal as well. So does that limit a student's ability to study abroad? Um, the answer is it really depends on where. And so I know I've been at uh, OP Jindal for a couple of years now, and I've written a lot of letters of recommendation. We've had a lot of students go abroad. Uh, the choice destination is typically the UK or Australia. Uh, in both of those cases, a three-year degree works perfectly fine. Uh, there are some universities in the UK, not many, but a few, and particularly in North America, so the US or Canada, uh, where they really do want a four-year degree. Okay, But one of the good things is over the last five to 10 years, that has been changing. And so there are now many universities, both in the U.S. and Canada, including Harvard University, Yale University, Berkeley, Columbia, where they now will accept a three-year degree. And so graduating with your degree here, it may limit some options, again, if you want to go to the U.S. or Canada, but there should still be enough available that you should be able to find a program that interests you if you do want to pursue a master's or a Ph.D., Great, great. So, uh, uh, Sanika is asking, how is clinical and behavioral psychology different? Yeah, so clinical, again, is really focused on treatment and therapeutics. So a clinical psychologist is almost exclusively working with patients that are suffering from mental distress or mental illness. And again, that's not just sort of the classic you know, schizophrenia. You know, it could be a personality disorder. It could be an eating disorder. It could be substance abuse. Uh, it could be a gender dysphoria, uh, right? There's, there's all sorts of issues that clinical psychology is going to come into play. Now, a behavioral psychologist, uh, really they're focused on trying to understand behavior. That may be from a research perspective. That may be from a therapeutic perspective. So it really comes down to the actual, uh, the psychologists themselves and how they want to pursue it. Um, and again, between those, again, is really the, the therapeutics, the therapy and the counseling that I talked about earlier. And so I would say there's really three sides here. One is research. And I will say research is not a field that's really emphasized a lot in India. Um, you do see it some at the postgraduate level, but at the uh, bachelor's level, you don't see much. That's one of the ways we've really tried to distinguish ourselves at uh, Jindal School of Psychology and Counseling is trying to avail opportunities for research to our students. Uh, the second is uh, therapeutics, again, clinical or counseling psychology. The other is applied psychology. So that would be the forensic or the industrial organization or the sports psychology. So again, it's not just figuring out the discipline that you want to study and what you want to pursue. It's really getting that exposure so you can figure out which of these directions you want to go. Great. So, uh, oh, Chanchal Yadav has written a very big message. Internship. Yeah, I think it's about internship. Yeah. I uh, Should I? Should I take it? Sure. And then I'm happy to jump on after and uh, talk about it a yeah. little bit uh, as well, so, if you like. Great. Uh, so, you can look at various places, Chanchal. Like, uh, uh, there are companies which are into test development. Like, you can check out Psycom services. So, Psycom has been in test development for last 35 plus years now. Uh, you can check out Varanasi Psychological Corporation. Of course, uh, there are some multinationals also which are doing more test development for, uh, you know, uh, large organizations and uh, uh, a lot of HR interventions and so on. So that also you can look at. Uh, then you can look at uh, any kind of counseling firms. So like we are a career counseling firm. We largely work with schools. And also we have a lot of retail clients, people who come to us. So, uh, so similarly, there are a lot of uh, counseling firms who are working on specific areas. There are special education startups today working all over. There are companies like you can see companies uh, uh, in front of in front like Talkspace, Shadi.com, Mercer Consulting. Yeah. So some are outside and some in India. I think Next Page has a lot of. So these are for recruitment as well as internships. Next page, please. So I'll just show you some more companies also. So like Inarar is there. So Inarar is a startup and they're pretty, uh, they've, they've grown pretty fast and they got some funding also. Next, please. 
So uh, your dose is pretty big. In fact, I did a webinar with Richa Singh also some time back, and you know she has tied up. She has done wonderfully well. She has tied up with a lot of corporates as well as colleges, and uh, people have uh, uh, an online system where they can take help from their uh, counselors. So they raised uh, quite a quite a lot of funds, and they they kept on expanding. Today it is today it is a large company operating not only in India but uh, in outside India also. So, so you can find out such companies. You can intern with them. If you are looking for a specialized thing, like like in Delhi, if you're looking for a relationship counselor, you can intern with a relationship counselor. You can go to uh, go and intern with Dr. Sanjay Chub, who's a uh, he's a uh, uh, drugs uh, de addiction expert. Yeah. So depending on whom you are looking, what kind of this thing, you can Google there. You can approach them. Check out sites like Let's Intern, Intern Shala for various psychology or internships. You can work with a large corporate or a startup also on various issues related to HR. So any of these you can look at. Vaisa is a pretty good AI-enabled mental health chatbot. So that is how you can look for internships. Derek, you were saying something. Uh, no, I, I mean I'm happy to uh, jump in if you like. Uh, so one question, quick question. Kashish is asking: Is criminal psychology safe for girls? Uh, Yes, I think so. Um, I mean, it, it, again, there's a lot of variability. It just really comes down to your specific uh, expertise and what you want to pursue. Um, you know, often if you're doing the research side, um, you know, you may be involved, uh, you know, interacting with people that have committed crimes. Um, but presumably you're doing that with the law enforcement. So I don't think there should be any safety issues applied. Um, but, you know, you also may be working as a consultant where you're working with juries or lawyers and others where you may have very limited uh, interaction with any type of uh, criminality. But on the whole, I would say that, uh, yes, I, I don't think safety should be a concern. Okay, great. Uh, uh, mischievous Nerve is asking, can humanities students become clinical psychologists? Like in India, Mischievous Nerve, I like that name. <laughs> you can do that. You can uh, take up psychology honors. Like in India, it's absolutely fine. Like there's no uh, requirement that you can take up. Uh, anybody can take up psychology honors. Even somebody had earlier had asked, if I have not studied psychology in 11th and 12th, can I still do psychology? Answer is yes. If I have not studied psychology in bachelor's, can I do psychology in master's? India, uh, absolutely fine. But certain other countries might have some restrictions. For example, Canada. So if you want to do a bachelor's in psychology in Canada, you need to have maths in 11th and 12th. Yeah. So Canada, most of the top universities will have this requirement. Few universities in, uh, in, in UK also would have those requirements. So it depends on where you are aiming at. But India, any top university like Delhi University, Ambedkar, Gautam Buddha University, Christ, uh, uh, and I, I hope uh, Opi Jindal also, uh, mm -hmm. any background is fine. There's no yeah. specific requirement. Uh, Mishti Agarwal. MA psychology is fine, but you should do a lot of internships. I strongly feel that, uh, Mishti, if you take up a lot of internships, you understand practically what is happening, then you can choose. Yeah. Yeah, uh, if I can jump in there real quick. Please. So I, I, yeah. I agree with you 100%. So again, to uh, kind of put out my school, Gender School of Psychology and Counseling, uh, yeah. our students uh, have to do an internship every break. Um, and we have a lot of uh, opportunities lined up. Because uh, again, you know, in-class learning is fine, but ultimately really what you wanna be able to do is to apply it to the real world. And that's really what internships are designed to do is to get you out and get you that real world exposure. And you know, I think you should look at it this way that if you go into it thinking you know what you wanna do, and just to reiterate, uh, most programs, including our own, you don't have to have psychology as a background. Uh, we accept students from any streams. But you may come in thinking, I want to be a clinical psychologist or counseling psychologist, right? And you go do an internship in counseling psychology, right? You may love it. Great. Good for you. You know, you found what you like. But you may hate it. And that's e equally valuable to know, right? Because, again, it's getting that real-world experience and figure out what do you want to do. And so there's really no better way to do that than through the internship program. So I agree. It's a really valuable experience and one that most of our students really enjoy. Absolutely, absolutely. 
so uh, vanishri typically like uh, dipr you join you go after masters uh, is snu a good college for psychology uh, yeah decent i mean somehow they are very good for tech but yeah they should be decent meeka i want to sp pursue sports psychology is it a good option to bachelor's masters abroad uh, typically meeka i find all other if there are no other constraints uh, yes you can go abroad for it because abroad typically you find uh, specializations available after bachelor's also in india though you will find it after masters in masters or after masters uh, not on map uh, best internship we just discussed uh, you can also look at my psychology video i have given a lot of details uh, of of uh, internships available but quickly i'll i'll go over some other companies name like vaisa is one your dos i shared earlier next please i'll quickly go over these companies to help you trust circle is another one it's again a global digital startup and uh, they keep on doing a lot of mental health tests with uh, various audiences next uh, trijog is founded by a mother daughter duo anurit and avishi sethi and uh, you know they promote mental health awareness next growthx so they enable personal growth so this is a unique this thing they are you know people sign up for their kind of packages and they do individual it's more like a coach they act like a coach which is helping people grow further next seranithi is using technology again for high quality empathetic effective counseling so again an online counseling firm next Nishita Agicha, as I said, uh, uh, like most of the jobs in India are available in counseling. But if I look at uh, as an entrepreneurial opportunity, then probably I would think of you know I would think of career counseling. I would think of uh, I would think of relationship counseling. Uh, I would think of these areas which are really growing. Yeah. Uh, so Can I answer one as well? Yeah, please. sorry to jump in. Uh, I've seen yeah, it a couple please. of times here from Kashish and uh, Vichika. So they're asking about the difference between a BA honors in psychology and applied psychology. Um, so applied psychology, again, is a, is a specific area where you're taking psychology theory and findings and you're applying it to the real world. So again, that could be looking at uh, industrial organization. It could be forensic and criminal psychology. It could be sports psychology, et cetera. Most psychology programs, both here and most psychology programs in the world that I'm aware of, for a bachelor's, you usually just get a bachelor's in psychology. You don't specialize, that is, you don't choose, I want to do research or uh, applied psychology, et cetera, until you get into your master's program. So, for instance, uh, we are starting up a master's in applied psychology next year. Uh, and the students will have the opportunity to choose from uh, community, uh, forensic and criminality, and uh, industrial organization. But at a bachelor's level, it's usually you want that broad exposure. So it's usually a degree in psychology writ large. Uh, great, great. Mika, you can just look at topuniversities.com. You'll get listings. I might not remember exactly. Uh, Sana Goel is asking, how do you know that psychology is right for you? And what are the main options as in counseling psychologists, which role has more opportunities? Sana Goel, actually all roles have opportunities. When I started doing career counseling, everyone around me, all adults around me refused to believe. They said, no, what is this? People don't come for career counseling. In India, people just check with other elder brother, sister, uncle, auntie, and nearby area. That's what I was told. But then when I started doing it, after two, three years, uh, people, when they started seeing the name in newspapers, and some TV channels, then people are like, okay, one is doing a good job, blah, blah, blah. So, Sana, we cannot say that, look, this is, of course, every every two, three years, there's some field which is growing. Like, I feel, I feel right now in India, relationship counseling will really grow. Career counseling is already very, very fast growing. There are so many companies, I can't tell you. Uh, I think the government will also do something about relationship counseling, looking at the divorce rates in the country and so on. I also feel in India, drugs detection center will grow further. Uh, some states are having a lot of issues with drugs. And you have seen a very high profile case also happening in Mumbai. Uh, then uh, we would see, uh, we would see uh, maybe, uh, uh, okay, uh, some, some specialized firms handling only depression cases. Yeah, 
I would see some sleep disorder thing coming in, social media detox centers coming in. I see a lot of lot of child psychologists being required by schools, by uh, by the government, by because government a lot of places they run schools, they run centers, and so on. So I see all of this uh, really growing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And anything? if I could, yeah, if I can add on quickly, I, I agree with you fullheartedly. And I think that, uh, you know, as traumatic as the last uh, 18, 20 months have been with COVID-19, um, from a psychology perspective, one of the things it has done is reinforce the importance of uh, mental health professionals. So we know that the uh, worldwide prevalence rates of both depression and anxiety almost doubled. That is twice as many people were experiencing depression and anxiety during COVID-19 than previously. And so we know that there is a really a lot of room for growth, uh, particularly in India, for mental health professionals. Now, that's primarily on the treatment side, but I think the same is true across the board for psychology. Uh, there's really just great opportunity for uh, growth. Um, and whether that's in applied psychology or treatment oriented, I think that uh, it's really a pretty safe bet that in the uh, next 10, 20, 30 years, uh, we're going to see a lot of improvement there. And I would just uh, also make one more point. Uh, one of the things I've really noticed in India, and I find this true particularly in our own school, is uh, a lot of guys shy right away from it, right? So I just want to be very clear that there's nothing in psychology that is specific to gender. That is, it's not sort of geared towards females or males. We're talking about humans. We're talking about how we act, right? How we behave, how we think and feel and desire, et cetera. And so I do know for cultural reasons, uh, some families are a little more reticent for their sons to pursue psychology. Uh, but I do think that will change, hopefully, and uh, something that we're pushing as well, uh, that psychology is a perfectly valid choice for both uh, boys and girls or men and women. Uh, you know, Derek, sometimes uh, people say, I am doing psychology so that I can have better relationships. Is it true? <laughs> Some yeah, you know, the, ins the inside joke is why do you pursue psychology, right? Is because, uh, you know, you're trying to understand yourself, uh, yeah. whatever the case may be. Uh, and so, yeah, I think that's one of the real uh, benefits to studying this field is uh, you did gain insight. You know, I love it when my students come up and they tell me that, you know, we've just talked about social psychology or cognitive psychology, and they go, I did it, right? We're talking about uh, uh, attitudes or, or, or whatever, right? And they go, you know, I, I, I noticed it myself. I noticed it in my own life that this thing we just talked about, I actually engaged in it. I did it. And so, um, yeah, I think that if you are kind of in tune to yourself, right, and you're always wondering why you do what you do and why other people do what they do, um, yeah, you're going to love psychology because that's what we're specifically here to address. Yeah, yeah. Great. So, and. Uh yeah, so uh, we got a couple of other questions. When do you choose your field of specialization in psychology? So Anna Kohli, uh, typically in India, there are some opportunities at master's or beyond master's. Like I have somebody who's working with me at office. She did a master's in psychology from North Campus. And right now, she, and then she completed a one-year course from NIPSED, N-I-P-C-C-D, which is a government of India's body which trains school counselors. Yeah. So uh, Akshita Roda, after clinical, uh, how to become a clinical psychologist? After MA in psychology, you can do a MPhil clinical psychology, and then you can become. Vanshika, it's not like that, that applied is better, this is better. It actually depends on the college. Uh, most of the new age colleges are offering, you know, uh, good programs, uh, which are very practically oriented. So it is as good as applied. Otherwise, uh, otherwise there's no problem. Uh, I mean, you can do anyone and still it depends on the kind of internships you'll take up. It depends on what, what other things you can take up and, and then you'll go for it. Yeah. So, so, uh, so again, could I, please, can please. I jump in just real quick? Yeah. Right so right. in terms of the specialization, uh, you're right. Typically you would do that, um, with, uh, the master's program or your PhD. And it's really after you get your master's that you are quote, a psychologist, uh, you're, you're, you're not really quite a psychologist yet with a bachelor's. Um, but again, just to promote my own school, um, one of the things we've done is at the end of the two years where I said our students take all these basic core courses, our students do have the opportunity to choose one of three specializations or what we call track of study. So it's research forensic is one, 
industrial organization is two, and um, counseling education is the third. And so in your final year of study at our school, our students have a whole series of elective courses from which they can choose. Uh, and the idea is that they can take the courses they want based on their per, uh, personal interest and their professional long-term goals. Now, all of our students still graduate with a psychology degree. It's not specialized, but you can take coursework specialized to your own particular interest. Right. Uh, so I got another one. Uh, can you guide a little bit about scholarships, like how to get one and which one? So it depends on, you know, where you're going, Mihika. But each university, like if you're looking at abroad, so each university has uh, need-based and merit-based scholarships. Also, uh, there are other bodies which help you in getting scholarship. So I would suggest we'll be sharing our numbers. You can be in touch with our study abroad team. They'll give you some ideas of how and why it can happen. Arushi as well, industrial psychology, you can do uh, after master's, you can do a specialization and then you can become. Can you tell a good clinical psychology colleges in India? Like Nimhans is a good college. Post master's, you can go for MPhil there. They don't do any bachelor's. You can go for master's MPhil programs there. Can, is there any way you can travel after studying psychology? Sana Goel, I travel all the time. I travel internationally. And uh, in India, I do workshops, webinars. We do a lot of work. I am part of a lot of international conferences. Uh, just to highlight, uh, last, last year I went to Bratislava, a place which I was not knowing. Uh, and uh, I met up with 400 career counselors from all over the world. So if you kind of build up yourself in your specialized area, then you would network with global community. You can do projects uh, in India, outside India. It, you should just become the best in that area. Is there unemployment? Yes, Vidushi, in all the fields, there is unemployment, including psychology also. If you just do, if you come out with bookish knowledge, then it might not happen. Like you might not get the right job. Yeah, and again, if I could just follow on that real quickly. Yeah. Uh, sure, there's, there's unemployment in every field, um, right? That's just a, a fact of life. Uh, but again, the job growth is really good. Uh, I don't have statistics for India, but the uh, U.S. Bureau of Labor has shown that uh, mental health professionals, uh, jobs related to that are growing at a faster rate than other types of jobs. Um, and so I do think that there's a lot out there. And let me just share with you one quick survey. Uh, again, this is from the U.S. about 20 years ago, but I think it applies to India and many other places. They asked professional psychologists, those with a Ph.D., uh, Right. If you had, if you could go back in time and do it again, would you still study psychology in, in college? Would you still get a bachelor's in psychology? And seventy percent of these professional psychologists said yes, they would. Um, so again, it's really the idea that most of the people drawn to this field, we really like what we do, and whether that's treatment or research or applied psychology, uh, there is a lot of job job satisfaction in the field itself. Absolutely. Kashish, uh, Kashish, it depends. Uh, uh, like, uh, MIT is pretty good for law, but psychology, like, we need to look at, if you have better options, you can look at that. Is India good for studying psychology until graduation? Uh, so it depends. I mean, if money is not a problem and parents are ready emotionally, then you, you can go out also. Average salary, Pithlal, in India, if you're from top five universities, let's say, can hover in the range of 40 to 50,000 rupees per month. Can you name some colleges for BA in psychology in Delhi? Yes, Mishti Agarwal, you can look at uh, like LSR, IP College for Women, JMC, Kamla Nehru College, OP Jindal University, uh, Ambedkar University, Jami Millia Islamia, all this. Christ University, uh, Ashoka Christ University. University. Yep. Yes, yes. yes. Kanishka Agarwal is saying, which country is better for master in clinical psychology? Uh, Kanishka, this you have to really tread with care because a lot of countries, you know, you need an, you need an asso association's approval. Like in UK, it is BPS, British Psychological Society. Uh, so countries like Canada, it is pretty difficult. It is not easy for international students to get uh, 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 a membership. I mean, it takes time, energy, efforts, and so on. Comparatively, uh, by both, I feel UK and Australia are comparatively more open, though we have sent students to US also. Yeah. So uh, 
the clinical especially because each country has their own rules and like like in india also for being a doctor it is very much regulated though for psychology right now it is not but i'm sure uh, some regulations would come as the field keeps on growing bigger and bigger so so that is what uh, it is can we go abroad for phd in psychology after doing masters in india yes ritu you can but but be clear that you should have done a lot of research before that you should have uh, maybe published in international or national journals you should have done a lot of internship it's if it is only studies and you've got good marks maybe top university might not even consider you top professors might not consider you because you would you you have not done practical research yeah so uh, vidushi uh, don't rely on college completely idly you should try for yourself also so vidushi uh, i have friends who are looking around so i you can you know i network with a lot of counseling career counseling firms so you can whatsapp your resume on this number and i'll try to put you in touch with the one or two recruiters who are immediately looking for uh, people uh so uh uh next i uh, will just quickly see derek if there is something okay there is international expressive arts therapy association so they keep on doing some events related to arts therapy next please we'll quickly run through it people i just want to show you some things and then take your take more questions so normally global art therapy resources so one of my team members was really interested so she had taken it out so i thought i'll just share it here next uh, art and music next please so all of these right now the way things are organized i have friends who are dance therapists and art therapists so they they might pursue a school job right now and do it on the side and do things on the sunday and find out a corporate where they can do it or a institution where they can do it and then later on like it takes some time for them to build up and then maybe they'll do this only yeah so that's how it is happening right now you can check digital detox india some of you are asking about internship so look at the latest startups in the psychology field you should go and do internship there so that you can learn and then build up next so various universities for psychology next i we have already talked about it so you can also look at my psychology video on youtube i have given all the universities yeah uh one which we missed was iapr they are also doing a good job lsr is top college next next uh so iapr is pretty good i i have seen how they have grown and uh, they also offer a lot of uh, uh, i would say liberal arts kind of courses so it's not psychology psychology at a bachelor's level and a lot of students want to do a mix of courses so you can look at psychology marketing economics and later on you can use this background to build up on uh corporate psychology or industrial psychology next op jindal uh, uh, established uh, jgu in 2009 so they offer a psychology honors course uh, derek is uh, heading uh, op jindal psychology department next gargi vanshika is quite decent anna koli not really i mean i mean it's fine you can just research on what is happening in the field but you'll go for a bachelor's program next uh punya devan the starting salary might not be too great for some people like if i do engineering from iit i can start off with a salary of average salary today of 12 15 lakhs per annum good iits but uh, i if i go in, in management so i'm in the five year program i can start with a salary of 1.5 lakh per annum on an average highest was 3.6 lakh per month per per month sorry not per annum 1.5 lakh per month whereas psychology still like even top university i will get maybe 50 60 on the top average salaries might be 30 35 35 40 maybe yeah so uh, so it takes time because you you think if you have to go to a career counselor or a special educator you would want somebody with experience yeah so uh, the more you grow the more time you spend the more you grow and kind of people have more faith on you and some of it does take some time initially that's what i feel okay next uh, yeah so uh, i would invite uh, direct to speak more about op jindal what is happening at op jindal 
uh, and uh, uh, Derek, uh, uh, like I, I have visited and uh, I, I really love the university, the infrastructure, uh, as well as uh, the food also. Yeah, I think <laughs> I visited, I think, like four years back. And uh, amazing. I, ha- I had, uh, I think, two cuisines were available and I went in for Thai cuisine. And <laughs> I had this, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the base color is green. And uh, so that was the base and good, good food. I mean, I really enjoyed and the lush gardens and so on and so forth. Yeah. It's really a beautiful campus. Yes. And uh, again, the uh, last uh, year and a half with no one on campus, they've actually been able to do a lot of work. So they've really... Uh, uh, remodeled quite a bit. Uh, I just returned myself about a month ago. It was fabulous. Um, and so I, I've sort of talked to you about the uh, curriculum a bit, right? We have this uh, 19 core courses uh, during your first two years. During your third year, you can select from one of these three tracks. Um, and again, our goal is to really provide the students the exposure and the expertise. Uh, we also get this through uh, course practicums, where you take that in-class learning and bring it to the outside, as well as the internships that I talked about. And the final component would be the research. Now, not all of our students will do research per se, uh, but we do have a lot of research centers uh, where students can work, and we're also encouraging our faculty to take on students. So for those students that have a real interest in uh, research, uh, the opportunities are there and available. And so the goal is, is that when our students graduate after three years, uh, again, they're really well prepared, uh, whether they want to directly into the job market or whether they want to continue on with their postgraduate education. And while you're at OP Jindal Global University, uh, again, you're working at a uh, internationally recognized university. Um, we are the number one private university in all of India, according to the uh, QS World Rankings. And the uh, Ministry of Education has designated JGU a institution of eminence, uh, one of only 10 private institutions in all of India as well. So although it was just established in 2009, uh, in that 12 years or so, uh, the school has really kind of excelled and established itself both at a, a national and international level. Uh, the campus is amazing. Uh, if you like sports, we have all sorts of opportunities from cricket to basketball to track and field. Uh, if you like uh, cultural events, right, we have plays, musical events. And this is all s- sort of future tense, uh, right? We're actually still online right now. I think most campuses are at this point. But uh, we're all really hopeful that by spring semester, uh, our students will be able to return and we'll be able to uh, join them on campus itself. So it's a great opportunity for any of those that may be interested in and um, just to come back to what Mr. Jensen was saying earlier, uh, one of the questions were, what are the downside of psychology? And uh, sure, salary is part of it, right? Um, there are a few areas in psychology where you can make a lot of money, including industrial organizational psych is probably one of the highest uh, because you are working in the world of business and industry where the salaries are typically higher. Um, but you will always make enough money to get by to live. Um, And so, you know, for those that are interested in psychology, we do it because we enjoy it. Um, You know, we have a good living. Um, You're certainly going to be able to get by. You may not be extraordinarily wealthy, uh, but if that's what you're really looking for, then yeah, there's certainly other uh, occupations out there that might be a better fit. Um, So I think it's a, a great opportunity for those that are interested in psychology as a discipline and as a topic. Um, so I think we've hit most of the questions. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, so, uh, uh, BA, BA in psychology, be honest, so it depends on, you know, uh, yeah, internship, somebody was asking, please look at it. This is a complete list. I forgot Parvarish, so one of my very close friends, Sushant runs Parvarish. Whenever you say Derek will come to the campus and have lunch. <laughs> yeah, we'd love to have you. Absolutely. You. And when you're in South Delhi, please come. I'll invite a couple of these people and we can talk to them about offering internships also. Uh, Shushant, uh, you know, he runs Parvarish. He has been doing this for last All about right. And we 12, may be having some years. internet issues again. Is it? Can you hear me? Yep, you're back. Okay, great. So Parvarish, I was telling Shushant runs it. He's an engineer MBA turned parenting expert. So he he has hired a lot of psychologists and he takes interns also. 
then Mulchand, uh, Dr. Jitain Nagpal is there. He has been, again, doing a lot of stuff. Uh, Gangaram Hospital, Dr. Roma is there, again, a good friend. So so these are these are people who really take interns. And of course, later on, they hire people also. Next. Also outside, of course, you can look at various countries, but uh, generally like UK, Australia, people do go to. Next. Hi, Punya. Good to have you here. So, uh, Punya, what are you doing right now? Uh, so abroad, you can see these are lists of top universities, right from an Oxford, Cambridge to UC Berkeley, UCLA, and so on. So a lot of top universities across. Next. Ritu Manocha, you should need to understand entrepreneurship also. Uh, I don't know at what stage of education you are at, but I would suggest go for a small entrepreneurship course so that you understand entrepreneurship and psychology. So music therapy courses abroad across universities. Next. Uh, Chahat, uh, uh, BN psychology will have other subjects also. Honors program in psychology will cover more details in various areas of psychology. Mishri Agarwal, after 12th, you can go to JGU. Anything, Derek, you want to speak, like she's asking, eligibility for BA program, do you have minimum marks or whatever, I mean, any boards, any structure? Yes. Well, first, let me say hi to Punya. It's nice to meet you. Uh, I know your father well, so it's a pleasure. Um, in terms of the distinction between BA and BA honors, is that the question? Yeah. And yeah, also, I, I think, also, what is the eligibility for BA in psychology? Sure. Uh, so in terms of the BA and BA honors, it really comes down to uh, the coursework and the number of credit hours. Um, and so uh, it sort of is said at the outset, we only have an honors program in our school. I do know that other programs, they have a BA and a BA honors. And so again, it really comes down to the amount of courses and the credit hours that you have to do. Um, in terms of eligibility, um, for our own school, um, again, uh, we welcome students from any stream, so you don't have to have a background in psychology. You do need to have an interest in psychology. So again, I'm gonna just sort of give you some general advice. So anytime you apply, uh, almost every application, they're gonna have some questions at the bottom, right? So, you know, think about those. You want to ensure that, you know, you come across as, you know, intelligent and cogent, and you can actually uh, give a coherent answer. And so even if you don't have a background in psychology, right, you, know, you, do, you need to do your due diligence, right? Read up on it a little bit, think about the questions and come up with a good response. Um, in terms of eligibility, uh, we also require a, a statement of purpose. And again, this is something I would, you know, recommend you put a little time and effort into because this is really the first contact that we have in admissions with the student themselves, right? This is the student telling us about themselves. And more specifically, a little bit about their background and why they are a good fit for our program. So again, you do want to kind of take your time and think about, you know, well, I've had this experience or this preparation, or even if you don't have a background in psychology, I have these interests and these desires. So again, you're really kind of spelling out the idea that I am a good candidate, right? That I am a good fit and you should accept me and bring me in. Uh, now, past that, of course, I think uh, most schools have an entrance exam. We do as well. Um, I assume that will be back in place by next year. Um, and so for our program, it's 60% uh, or above is the minimum threshold for uh, any of those, ACT, SAT, or we have our own uh, gender, uh SAT as well, JSAT, we call it. Um, and so I think, uh, again, I've looked at a lot of the other programs and schools out there. So I think there are pretty similar to what I've just told you. Uh, there may be some small discrepancies, but most of them are, are pretty comparable. Uh, great. So uh, I think most of the questions we have taken. So uh, uh, yeah, so a couple of people ask us about summer programs. So uh, you can look at various summer programs. So we just got a general list. Uh, of course, these are top universities like Boston, Columbia, John Hopkins, LSC has programs, Vijay University, Amsterdam has programs. If you're looking at a value for money option. Next. Uh, Chanchal Yadav, if you say, then we'll do it. 
we keep on doing various <laughs> sessions so i'll 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 try to organize it chanchan uh, king school uh, some program is again pretty well known uh, in uk and then smu some program you can look at if you want to go to singapore next right. so can i just jump in and say uh, oh, please, for our own please. school again um, again, we do have a study abroad program, which is, I think uh, most, again, psychology programs are going to offer. So ours is in the fifth semester. It's a great opportunity to uh, go out and get some experience and live in another country, learn a new language, experience a new culture. And for any of the students that are out there that might be interested in uh, psychology and OP Jindal specifically, uh, next summer we always do a summer school. Uh, and that's being done in uh, collaboration with our academic partner. They're called the Jindal Institute of Behavioral Sciences. And they've been doing it now for four or five years. So we will continue to do that. So uh, if you're interested, it's a two week program. You come in, you take a bunch of uh, courses uh, related to uh, psychology and the behavioral sciences. And it's great preparation for uh, what's to come. And so uh, I just wanna reiterate that it's not just, you have to go to these international programs. There's a lot of really good summer programs here in India as well. Fair enough. So, uh, uh, okay, there are a lot of online certificate courses which you can look at. Uh, some other bodies like uh, like uh, Nimhans, Wimhans, they also keep on doing. Uh, so this is uh, real call. So they are right now doing a program on NLP. You'll find uh, programs on NLP also. So this one is especially being done for students uh, uh, in in uh, schools or colleges. So it's a program for students. Next, <clears throat> yeah, Chanchal will definitely take it up. Uh, I think this we have already spoken about, Ribu. Next, uh, you can look at some ebooks. Uh, I got a very good site, guys. Uh, you can, you know, today I'm gifting you guys. I am writing it. So check out Z Library. You know, there are more than uh, more than two crore books. That means two hundred lakhs. That means like 20 million books free of charge on Z library. Just check it out. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, why, why some books? Uh, because like Atomic Habits. So it's a good book for you as a general person and otherwise also to understand. Even on Instagram, follow pages so that you understand you are interested in psychology. You have follow pages where people are talking about it, like basics of psychology or relationships. So keep on following to kind of build up detailing of that area. Yeah. So uh, so I think uh, you can take on these ebooks. Next. Next, please. Uh, I think we're not covering detox here. Yeah. Next. Yeah. I think we are almost done. So uh, so basically. Uh, uh, basically, we keep on doing webinars, guys, and people who have joined us today for the first time. We are a specialized career counseling firm. We keep on helping school and college students choose appropriate careers. And even if you want to, even if you want to go abroad, you want to target a specific country, you want to build up your profile, we help in all of this. You can see our numbers on the screen. You can be in touch with us. Uh, so this Innovation with Future Technologies is a new webinar we are doing. So this will be on 10th of November, and we'll be speaking about uh, STEM-based careers, you know. So we are doing it with a company called B Singular, who's present in India and Germany. And in fact, they are very strong in manufacturing. It's a, it's a huge company, uh, and they are very strong on the latest uh, uh, technologies like IoT, like cloud computing, like uh, robotics. Uh, and they keep on doing a lot of programs with schools also, uh, as well as uh, some new programs you'll hear here. So that day, Siddharth and me, we would be there and we we'll, together will be doing this program. Okay. So uh, for in, no one check out for internships, uh, OP Jindal, of course, if you're studying there, the university can help you. Otherwise, uh, you can write to us for uh, internships, one check out. Then uh, I can tell you where all to go, how to go about it. Okay. So uh, Derek, any last sentence you want to give to these budding psychologists, I will call them. No, it's uh, been a lot of fun. It's uh, been a great uh, pleasure to interact with you all. And so uh, obviously I'm here to promote our new school. Uh, again, one more time, the Jindal School of Psychology and Counseling. You can find us at www.jgu.edu.in slash JSPC. Thank you. There it is. 
but ultimately, you know, again, there's lots of great psychology programs in India. So uh, I really, my bigger sort of uh, concern here is to try to bring you on board. It's a great field. It's an exciting uh, opportunity. And uh, most of our students really enjoy studying it. So, um, you know, you got to look at your options. Uh, wherever you end up going to school, I wish you all the very best. And uh, good luck, and uh, please stay safe. Uh, you know, things do seem to be getting better. Hopefully that will continue. Uh, but take care of yourself moving forward. So uh, thank you, Lord. sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Derek. It was really great uh, being with you. And uh, uh, the kind of in-depth knowledge you possess and the kind of sharing you do was amazing. I think students uh, really uh, enjoyed it a lot. And uh, a lot of them want to be in touch. And I'm sure they would get in touch with Opie General University for uh, courses in psychology. Uh, Opi Jindal, again, has been a leading private university. I, I remember when it started, they started off with law, and today they are a name to reckon with in law. And uh, uh, I'm sure in the psychology field also, similar growth, similar opportunities will be there. So uh, uh, any uh, students, any help you need, you can be in touch with us. Uh, I wish you all the best. And... Uh, uh, keep on following our YouTube channel also for latest workshops and webinars. We have started doing physical workshops also. So if you follow our YouTube channel, you'll get uh, uh, connects, you'll get ideas about what is happening. So let's be in touch. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you all.